Hi. Oh, yep, this is where you can find the masterclass. Sorry, I didn't remember that screen was going to pop up. Mm -hmm. This is Megan Chapa, host of Travel Radio Podcast, if this is your first time watching or listening. And this is a video edition, which you can find on the YouTube channel. If you don't know where the YouTube channel is, just go to YouTube and search Travel Radio Podcast, or you can get it off of any of my links in bio. It's there. And it's also on TravelRadioPodcast.com forward slash YouTube. You'll see all the videos there. And today I am privileged to have a repeat guest because our last interview was wonderful and she is a wealth of knowledge. So let me now introduce you to my guest, Laurie Gold. Welcome back on the program. Thank you so much. Nice to be here. Yeah. Laurie is um, the mom of a group called Travel Agents <laughs> of the Riviera Maya. Is that correct? The Resorts of the Riviera Maya. The Resorts of the Riviera Maya. And she is the go-to gal in there. But folks... Just tag her. She'll get back to you when she's available. She actually works and plans some client trips. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that group is great, though. If you're a travel professional watching, you should really get into that group because all the information you want to know or ask has been presented there. I promise. I promise. So, Laurie, um, can you give us a, an introduction to yourself? And I'll bring up your website while we do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, I am a Canadian travel agent who moved to the Riviera Maya, Mexico five years ago and um, just living here, loving life and um, trying to see as much of the region as possible um, and all the resorts as well. Yeah. And you're you're making good progress on that. So and our Try. last episode, we should say, is on the Atelier. Is that how you say it? Yeah. There's, well, no one really knows how to say it, but well, <laughs> something like that. I was going with your pronunciation, and I've heard it pronounced like eight ways since then. So <laughs> I know, exactly. But we, we last reviewed that property because the last series was on all-inclusive properties that travel agents thought were worthy of mentioning during this time of COVID. Like, who was the winner's list? And many people had mentioned that hotel, and you were, uh, you were uh, gracious enough to interview and present it with me. So I thank you for that. But um, let's talk about, you know, some deeper into the Mexican culture, leaving the resort properties options. And specifically for that, will you uh, get us rolling on today's episode, which is exploring the cork forest of Solferino, Quintana Roo. So would you give us your, you know, um, kind of mm, like your best story or like a moment floating through it, if you would. And while you tell us your story, I'm going to get through some of your pictures. Yeah, I mean, it is so unique and it is just a place that, first of all, nobody knows about. Like literally people who live in this area, no one's ever heard of it. It's a tiny town um, that you pass through. And this is actually a family's land that they own. And they, when you enter the town, there's a tiny sign that shows them that this is an attraction, but it's all like washed out from the sun and all that kind of thing. So it really, it's you have to know about it somehow um, and nobody does. So it's really untouched. Um, it's it's really like a magical, mystical place. Like it, it feels like you're in a fairy tale. Um, I don't know if you can grasp it from the pictures, but you know, you're the only people there and there's wild orchids and I don't know how to say it, brom bromeliads, I think, or something yeah, like bromeliads. that. Yeah, bromeliads, yep. Yep, Load, um, hanging down and there's like wild vanilla. It's just crazy, like it's so, so cool. And this is a little platform they they built looking over their land and um, to the left there is where you enter to the cork forest. That's really impressive. And this is, is this how you step onto your boat? Yeah, that's a, we. so we're in a canoe and the guide is, in the canoe as well, um, pad pedaling, paddling. So we actually don't have to do anything, just relax and sit back and enjoy the views. Yeah, it's incredible. It looks like there should be a fairy tale written about it, like, or mm -hmm. located in it. It's very that's picturesque. Cool. Yeah, that's really exciting. So then how did you come to find out about it? I mean, you live in the area. So you have, you know, you have a leg up a little bit, you can poke some locals for their knowledge. But how did you come to find out about it? Well, I actually have a, a friend who is American and he's been living here for a while and he um, has a website called everythingplaidelcarmen.com. And I've been on his website. He, oh, really? Yes. <laughs> there you go. I actually partner with him. You know, he we work together for business things. Um, so he's great. His website is great. And he knows like everything. I don't know how he found out about it, but I found out about it from him through his website and just mm -hmm. been posting it on, on his Facebook page. And he like... 
it's funny because I'm planning another road trip and everything that I want to do, like that I find somewhere that I Google, he's written an article about it already. Like he's yeah. been everywhere. I don't know how he finds out, but that's how I found out about it. Yeah. And I like his uh, kind of, um, what is, what do I say? Like position or I don't know, but he basically says, you know, let's, let's t- put our money as close to the local people as possible. So he wants to go oh. as direct to the lo- local person as possible. And I'm, I'm on board with that. So yeah. Yeah. Pass, and this tour pass my thanks like- on to him. He's doing a great job. I will. This tour, uh, as far as I know, can't be booked with anyone else but the owners of the property. Like it's not with the tour operator or anything else. So you literally, you know, contact um, Pepe on WhatsApp when he has reception, you know, and when he gets back to you, then you can book it and then that's it. But there's no like pre-booking or there is pre-booking, but there's no pre-paying or booking it through a tour operator. Like you have to get there yourself. You know, it's it's very um, off the beaten path. Or you can use a travel professional, and I'll put your contact information up right there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. There All right. So, um, so now we, you you talked about it's a canoe, not a kayak. It's a canoe. So it feels pretty sturdy. Oh yeah, totally. Okay, good. Because <laughs> as beautiful as that is, when there's dark water for me, it's like Mm-mm, no. <laughs> the water's not that dark. I mean, you could see. To the bottom, oh. not, not to the, yeah. I think you could see to the bottoms, so, and you could see fish swimming. Yeah, it wasn't like super dark, so okay. Um, yeah. So what else is in there? Um, you know, we didn't see too much wildlife. It's crazy because they were going to show us some some other animals, but the 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 lake that it's on, I guess, or that that area, it changes with the weather, and the passageway to get where they want to go was now closed by like this grass that we couldn't get oh. through. So it's really cool. Um, It was kind of unfortunate, but also cool that that can happen, you know, and it can just change. And then you're sort of stuck where you can't go past there. Um, Hmm. We saw a lot of birds, a lot of cool birds. We saw toucans and things like that. Um, And we didn't see any jaguars, but we saw prints of jaguar and puma. And they, it's crazy. Like when we're driving through the jungle, like to us, it looks like just jungle and and I'm like, how do you know that that print was there? You know, and they're like, it's like you in a city. Like we have like street signs in the jungle that we would recognize, but you yeah. wouldn't. It, it's just it's insane. Um, and they also have a jaguar project that they're doing, like where they uh, rehabilitate jaguars and put them back in the wild. So the final stage of that happens on their land, which oh, is really wow. cool. Yeah. So now, are they also armed? Is there a concern? No, no, there isn't. There's no okay. concern. Um, <laughs> Does that they, I have I to they ask? Have had this, uh, machete, but that's it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you know, I in in this, you probably saw my questions, and that I said it looks like it's a bumpy road to get to the Cork Forest, which of course was your friend's video. So would you describe getting there? And you know, is is this a limitation for some guests? Would this be prohibitive? I mean, it wasn't too bad. Like this area of Mexico is completely flat. Like there's no mm-hmm. mountains or even really hills, you know, it's it's really flat. So, you know, you're going into the jungle, but it is somewhere that they go often. So they they have, you know, a path that you go okay. on and sometimes, but like with rain and things like that, it can affect the, you know, but you're in a pretty sturdy ATV type vehicle. So, okay. you know, I think it's not for everybody, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, that's good to know. So then... Um... So then is there's only floating options. You're not going to walk the cork forest. That's not an option. You know what? When Seth went from Everything Playa del Carmen, his videos look very different from mine. And I think yeah. it, it really depends on the water level. Like some, I think no matter what, you're you're in a canoe for most of it. But some areas you can walk, you could walk when he went. But when I went, it was completely um, underwater. So mm-hmm. it was fully, you know, everywhere we had to take the canoe. But it depends on the season, I guess. Sure. So... Um, now you live there. I imagine you've picked up some Spanish. Was the tour guide speaking to you in Spanish or was the tour in English? I don't speak Spanish and I understand a lot. Um, but for something that in depth, um, you really, you know, want it in your language. Um, the people that own it are, like I said, it's a family. So Mm -hmm. the people who took us on the tour was the uncle and the nephew. And there were two other people on our tour um, and they spoke Spanish. So the uncle only spoke Spanish. He told them everything and the nephew 
spoke to us in perfect English. And I think he's even been interviewed by National Geographic and things like that. So wow. he's really, really knowledgeable. They're both are. I mean, it's just amazing what they know. Awesome. That's, that's good to know. So we've talked about wildlife. Oh, oh, so someone I'm interviewing tomorrow is trying to join the meeting now. <laughs> I think they were just, I think they were just testing the link, but I did not, I did not <laughs> join her. And that wouldn't be comical though. She knows a lot about Mexico. <laughs> so then, you know, how long is this tour? Is a meal provided? Do you need to eat this time or is it like just not that long? You know, it was pretty long. I can't remember exactly how long it was, but probably like 10 to 3, it, 10 to 2, something like that. Um, and I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere, right? So we did bring a little backpack with um, with water and some snacks, but they also provided um, sandwiches and Jamaica water and snacks as well. So um, they came prepared. So you, like I said, you're you're in the middle of nowhere. There's no um, cell phone reception or, or anything like that. Um, there, there's also a branch or a, a vine, I guess, that they found that they know about that if you cut it with a machete, it has water coming out of it, which is really cool, like drinkable water. So there's that. Did also. you drink it? We tried it, yeah. <laughs> Was it sweet or bitter or what? Pretty normal. Pretty normal. Wow. Yeah, I did that good. a lot of backpacking as a teenager and you know college age person um got some parasites that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think they know what they're doing but <laughs> i live to tell about it so now it's exactly. funny that's what we have to say about that <laughs> all right so what about bugs is this very bug heavy and um how did you deal with that i thought it would be i mean i definitely put on repellent beforehand um and a little bit of it was like just getting really deep into the jungle on the way to the actual water but once we were there in the cork forest it was just perfect i mean there's like a lot of dragonflies and a symbiotic relationship i guess between them and the mosquitoes they the mosquitoes and mosquitoes do something else and you know it was just really perfect like it was a perfect environment with no bugs oh yes yeah that sounds amazing because <laughs> that's not what you imagine it would be like so that's good no. yeah so what about um you know accessibility from resort properties is this something you're doing from already being located, you know, a little further out, or you can do this from a resort? No, you can definitely do it from a resort. Um, it's it's about two hours from Cancun or an hour and a half from Playa. And I mean, you know, from Cancun to Tulum is two hours. So it's the same. It's just a different direction. Okay. You know, so for someone who's looking for something really different off the beaten path and really um, with connecting with nature, it's perfect. And it's really not that difficult to get to um, with a private transfer. There's no issues. Okay, that's what I was going to ask if you would uh, at, suggest a private transfer or if you would suggest driving yourself. You know what, either or, um, driving is a whole nother topic, you know, but um, it's to totally doable and there's private transfers, there's also, you know, buses and things like that. Okay. It is about 15 minutes from the ferry to Holbosch, which is a super up and coming um, destination. So while it's in the middle of nowhere, it's really like you have to pass it to get to Holbosch, which, like I said, a lot of people are going to these days. So okay. it's kind of, it's a tour you can do from Holbosch, you know, because you're already there. And because it, it leaves, I mean, they, they like to leave in the morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're already just about 15 minutes from, from the tour. Hmm. So, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, I think that that's really, I just want to do a kind of an overview enough to get people's feet wet, but not spoil it for them or, you know, yes. their appetite, if you will. So then, um, is there anything that you want to include before we end it? I think that's a great introduction to the Cork Forest, and I hope people check it out. I hope people contact you because this is something that seems preserved and should be explored, and I know there's some history behind it, but um, you know, we'll save that for another day. Yes, so. for sure. No, I think that um, if you're looking for something really cool that no one's ever heard of, this is the perfect tour. Yeah, and that's endangered. Go see it. It's awesome. Yep. Cool. Go see a jaguar. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully not. Well, by mean, a jaguar. Cool, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you, Laura. I appreciate your time, and I hope that we can record again sometime soon. For sure. Pleasure. Awesome. All right, this is Megan Chapa of the Travel Radio Podcast saying thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and of course, if you subscribe or review the podcast, either uh, you know on your podcast platform or on YouTube, it helps it be suggested to other listeners, and I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Laurie, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.